Right, the character of deep ocean water is much the same around the world, here in the tropics or up in the Arctic. It is nature's compost pile. On land, when things die and they decay, they end up at the surface of the earth in various kinds of compost piles and various kinds of decay. But everything that dies in the ocean sinks down to the deep ocean. And there it goes through a decay process which is very different and it ends up as kind of a chemical fertilizer for the deep ocean. Thus the deep ocean is very nutrient rich and the shallow ocean is very nutrient poor. The second characteristic of the deep ocean is that because it is so far below the sun, more than 600 feet, there are almost no photons there. There is no biological activity. So therefore, from a drinking water standpoint, if it were not salty, it would be very high quality, pure drinking water. But the third characteristic, which is most important from an energy standpoint, is that wherever you are in the world, in the regular ocean, excepting in closed seas like the Mediterranean, the deep ocean water is cold. It is Arctic water. It is all at a temperature of between four and six degrees centigrade. So now this becomes a nutrient energy fluid, a vital elan vital, if you will. And when you bring this deep ocean water to the surface, several things happen. As soon as sunlight strikes it, and you have the smallest biologic place in that water, that biologic explodes. The second thing that happens is that when you have an energy process involved with heat, it becomes efficient because it is cooled, and it is cooled with a temperature lower than the atmosphere, and therefore it cools the, the atmosphere. It can grow very sensitive things because there are no competitor organisms. So these three characteristics make this an ideal fluid for environmentally sustainable development. Uh, how did we evolve into the many, many uses of deep ocean water that we do today? When we started the laboratory, we only thought about ocean thermal electrical conversion. And our first experiments were concentrated on what is called biofouling to make sure we could produce electricity without biofouling. This would require five, six, or seven years of continuous experimentation before we could prove that we hadn't biofouled. And so we asked ourselves, what other value would there be to this water? And the first thing we thought about was bioproductivity. And so we got a tank, and in that tank we put a sea vegetable called nori, which you recognize as the seaweed you wrap around sushi. And we discovered that this grew at 55% of biomass per day. Now, in addition to that, we looked at other ways for cooling, and it was very, very hot here. And we had lots and lots of investigators who were complaining about the heat and the air conditioning bill. And one investigator installed a Toyota radiator in his office, put cold water running through it, put a fan behind it, and had an ideal air conditioning system. And pretty soon everybody had an ideal air conditioning system, but each one made their own. And finally we have one that can be exported and used anywhere, and we utilize it in all our buildings, and we save some three to four thousand dollars per building per month at each time we have an installation.